good evening everyone. Hopefully the audio is good. I don't live stream enough to uh, have all this stuff memorized through OBS. But hopefully uh, everything's coming through from what I see. It's streaming live uh, and from what I can hear I've got good audio. If somebody could comment in the uh, chat section to make sure that the audio is coming through good. Uh, the video that I'm using, I'm using a little uh, a web camera called the Osbot uh, Tiny 2 4K web camera. They're in the wild apparently in the EU. I've seen unboxing videos, but most appear restricted until update populates. Well, thank you very much for letting me know that the audio is good. And we'll kind of get right into it. I don't want this to be a big, long rant. And uh, it's just very interesting because I came across, okay, just for legal purposes, let me just say, I heard through the grapevine. So that way, uh, GoPro, if they want to try to harass me, you know, they can go ahead and try to. we got a good legal firm at our office. So, But uh, I just want to talk about a little bit about the, the GoPro Hero 12. And if you saw my video yesterday, I talked about how excited that I was about the release of the GoPro Hero 12. And I really thought, you know what, there may be some, some hidden gems in there that nobody's released yet regarding uh, the specs of the GoPro Hero 12. And I thought, hey, in today's launch video, there may be some really cool stuff. And I will say that the person that did the video production for that launch video did a great job. I mean, the images look great. Uh, there was a couple of miscues where he was talking about uh, the HDR now is better than, or the video quality is better than the Hero 12. Uh, I think that they meant the Hero 11. But I wanna talk about reviews. That's what this video is all about. Is GoPro silencing the reviewers out there? And I heard through the grapevine that some reviewers are pretty PO'd about this whole GoPro Hero 12 thing and that they're basically told they are not allowed to do a pros and cons video about the GoPro Hero 12 and they're not to do any comparison videos. They can't compare it to the GoPro Hero 11 Black. They definitely cannot compare it to the DJI Action 4. And, okay, I can get some of that. Because, you know, when GoPro or any company sends you a product, they want you to review it. And, of course, they want you to try to really just show it off. What a great product that this is. And I, I get that. But then again, us as reviewers, we have to be honest in our reviews. So, I mean, if we're going to be a paid shill, and what I mean by paid shill, I mean, even if you got the camera for free and they did not pay you a sponsorship fee, you still got the camera for free. So you're paid for it. Um, it... I've done some NDAs before, like with the Suray lens, and Suray, you know, they sent me out everything about the lens. They tell me everything that it's capable of. They sent the lens to me. They say, please don't release it until this date because that's the launch of it. I bought it all that. But did you know what else that Suray told me to do? Nothing. They didn't say a word to me. They didn't tell me, Andre, you've got to say this. You can't talk bad about this. They didn't say anything. They said, review it. Uh, I remember when SJ Cam had sent me one of their uh, first models for review. They sent it to me. They said, this is when we want you to release the video. If you have any input, in the meantime, if you come across any problems, let us know, and our engineers will take a look at the firmware and see if they can tweak it a little bit. And I was good with that. And I abide with that with every company that I uh, do reviews for. And I say for companies they send me something i don't feel like i'm in, emboldened to them to give a good review on anything i give an honest review and cuz there's you know in all honesty there's no product out there that is 100% perfect none so acaso acaso sent me the acaso brave 8 
they sent me their prototype, and when they sent it to me, it said 8K. So, of course, you know, I do some testing with it, and I respond back to them. I'm like, this is not 8K. Don't even try. I mean, pull that. Let it be 4K. That's fine. You don't have to try to upsample 4K up to 8K. Consumers today are too smart. So, I guess the moral of the story is I've done NDAs before, and... I give my honest opinion because nothing is perfect. And I'm not saying that I go out and I try to bash cameras because I don't. I mean, my ultimate goal is, God, you know, all of us out there, whether we're filming um, major projects or you're a filmmaker, you're a short uh, filmmaker, you do documentaries, whatever, or you shoot family videos, that's all fine. But we all want to be able to use a camera and try to get the best image quality possible so when it comes to gopro and you know will gopro ever send me a product nope nope i do not fit within their um their mold of what a reviewer should be and you know it's like dc rainmaker he put out his video today and it's not a bash against Ray because Ray's a very cool cat and he does a lot of reviews for DJI and GoPro and a lot of different product bicycles, watches. And But if you listen very carefully and read in between the lines of what he was talking about, he said in an upcoming video, I'll get more in depth into some interesting results. And that goes on to the fact of these reviewers are a little bit upset that they are told that they can't talk about pros or cons. And there is a pro or con with the majority of items that are out there. And if you can't do a comparison, us as shoppers, and I say us because every GoPro that I have and ever had, I have purchased with my own money. Why? Well, you know, GoPro, they are the leader in action cameras and image quality and some of the other companies have have tried their best to kind of come up the ranks and to compete with gopro but i've had some sourness with gopro i mean my gopro hero 5 i uh, took it out into the pool had it roughly i don't know maybe about a foot two feet underwater in the swimming pool holding it in my hand just videotaping our daughter and sure enough, water got inside the camera. I reached out to GoPro. They told me basically go get bent and that it was user error. And it's like, okay, I'm very careful with all the cameras and all the electronic equipment that I have. There's no way that it was user error. Okay. I made a note to myself and I said, all right, I will always get a waterproof case for all the GoPros. And uh, I'll even fast forward to just this past uh, June. We took a cruise to the Bahamas with Royal Caribbean, and there's a place called, uh, one of the stops is uh, Perfect Day at Coco Cay. So we were out there. I filmed with the GoPro Hero 11. I filmed with the uh, Pocket, the original DJI Pocket. And there was a part where, you know, my daughter wanted to go out into the water. They had the little tiki bar things out in the water. The water, I'm six foot six, so the water had to have been no deeper than four feet. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take my GoPro Hero 7, catch some footage underwater with it. I did. Uh, had it maybe a foot down underwater while she was kind of like snorkeling around. And I brought it up and I went to hit the power button to turn it. Well, first I stopped recording and then I went to hit the power button to turn it off and it wouldn't turn off. And the screen was doing all sorts of weird stuff. And then I noticed that... I don't know if you can see. Let me get some light on that. But the little power on off. There we go. There's like a little rubber flap that goes over the power button. And I guess that had lifted up just enough to let some water in. And yes, I did take the lens out of this Scoper Hero 7. And it's really a shame because this Hero 7 was a very good camera. And I should have known better than to use it without a waterproof case, but I did. And it bit me again two times. There won't ever be a third time that I ever use a GoPro in the water, again, without a, uh, without a waterproof housing. But back on track with this, what this conversation is about, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are like, well, you know, if you look at the big 
YouTubers that review action cameras and I'm not going to mention any of the really big channels names, but you kind of know, because if you've been looking for some of the reviews of the GoPro Hero 12 and you're like, well, hang on a second. Okay. I see. Let's see. I think Danny Black had one, but there was no narration, no really talking about the GoPro Hero 12. It was just showing it doing its thing. Uh, I believe it was on a motorbike. And then you got DC Rainmaker. And that's basically it. All the other big YouTubers, no video about it. Very shocking. But it's also very telling. And uh, I believe that it was Scott from Scott's Reviews that had made a comment on the community tab on the main channel. Uh, and he basically made a valid point where, you know, don't know why GoPro would do this and tell people, tell these reviewers that you can't talk about this, you can't do any comparisons, when, you know, basically the consumer, since we have to do a pre-order, you can just cancel your order after a review comes out that shows some of the negative stuff. And that may be true, but then again, I think, uh, this is just me just thinking outside the box. I think that GoPro may be in the situation where they're taking in all these orders. They're saying that it's going to ship on the 13th, which makes it what next week, uh, one, next week, Wednesday, one week from today. I think they're going to take all the orders that come in today, maybe tomorrow. And there's going to be a shipment that goes out on the 9th or the 10th. And once it ships, it has been shipped. And then I think on the 13th, is when you're going to see all these reviewers drop their videos uh, talking about comparisons and is it really worth the upgrade to go from the GoPro Hero 11 up to the 12. I can tell you just as a consumer, from a consumer standpoint, not as a product reviewer standpoint, but as a consumer standpoint, when I saw today's video release, I was very underwhelmed. I was like, wow, they... They talk about a lot of good stuff. Now they've got 177 degree field of view, which kind of reminds me of the Action 4. Get some light on that bad boy. See if we can get this thing to autofocus. But the Action 4 has got a wider field of view than what the Hero 11 does. And then they talk about the um, Max Lens Mod that it's 2.0. So I really don't know what the max lens mod is going to be able to do 2.0. They didn't really touch on that. But, you know, you can get an aftermarket max lens mod, not from GoPro, but from these other companies, and put it on a GoPro Hero 11 and get even a wider field of view. So, you know, they took away the GPS out of the 12, which may be a really big thing because from what I'm hearing, from a lot of people, they are very, very, very upset at the fact that there's no GPS. And I guess they use it for the overlays. And if you're a bike rider or you're a car racer, you'd like to have that GPS overlay that you can put onto the screen. But, okay, so it's got better battery life. And it may be because the GPS unit's been removed. So that is not trickle charge or trickling down the battery. I've always said, and there's a couple of reviewers out there, and Tech for All is going to be one of them that uh, I like Michael from Tech for All. He doesn't, he doesn't get something and do a review like right away. He'll take his time. And, you know, hypothetically, yes, if the GoPro Hero 12 came out today and was available at Best Buy, would I have purchased it after watching today's release video? No. I would have said, whoa, 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 hang on a second. I'm going to wait and see some real reviews about this. I want to, there's a couple of trusted people in the field that I actually trust their opinion. And it's not all about sales and marketing and being a uh, showpiece for GoPro or for any of these other camera companies uh, for that matter. But I like seeing reviews from everyday people, people like you and me, people that will use a GoPro or use an Acaso or use a DJI product, whether it's a drone or a Sony camera. 
and actually give you a real world take, <coughs> excuse me, give you a real world take on how that product performs. Whether it's a microphone, it doesn't really matter. But when I'm told, and I have been told before by a company that, okay, you can't do this, you can't do that, don't compare it to this, this and that, and they tell me this via email after they've sent me the item. And I've gotten to a point, and I don't know if it's just old age kicking in with me where I just really don't give a crap anymore. Um, but I just sent them an email back saying, hey, do me a favor. Can you send me a prepaid return label? And I'll be more than happy to send this piece of garbage right back to you because I'm not going to be told on how to do a review. I mean, do I do the best reviews out there? No. I mean, I could do all sorts of graphics. I could be like... Uh, who is it that my daughter likes? Uh, Mr. Who's the Boss? Because very, very fast-paced, a lot of graphics going on. And I guess that's why YouTube Shorts are so popular right now because the attention span of people have just dropped down to zero. Nobody wants to listen and watch a long review anymore. They have to be visually and auditorily stimulated. But, I mean, do I do the best reviews out there? No, I don't. I, I don't. I do the best that I can but I'm always honest with what I'm saying. If I feel a certain way about a product, I feel a certain way. If I've been wrong about a product, I've actually made a video where I said I effed up. And I think it was the Insta3, Insta360 One R. And I think it had to do with the one inch, um, one inch module. But anyway, you know, I don't make that many mistakes, but when I do, I do own up to them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, DFW spider moose. Wow. No comparisons. Yeah. You know, that's, I mean, when I got the GoPro hero 11 last year and yes, I went out to Best Buy on release day. And luckily enough, that one that I was talking about yesterday, that's about 30 minutes from me. They had, I don't know, maybe 50 of them in stock where none of the best buys around me did. So I went out there, got it. I did a video that day comparing it to what? I compared it to this one here, the GoPro. Let's see if we can see it in there. Can we see it? Peel it back, Andre. The GoPro Hero 10. I mean, if I'm going to buy something and I, I, I want to see is it better than what the previous model was and how much better can I visually see how much better that it is. Uh, let's see. Ron Dickin, you are correct. The website was lacking on how great the GoPro Hero 12 is better. Seems to me it's just an upgraded chip with all new firmware. You know, I don't even think it's an upgraded chip, Ron, and I'll tell you why. Because, let's see, the GP1 was... When was the GPU? Was that five, six, and seven? Maybe eight. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go back. Maybe if if you know, comment the comment or comment in the uh, chat section. Uh, then the GP two came out, I believe, for the nine, the ten, and the eleven. If there was a new chip, an upgraded chip, let me tell you, they would have pushed that really, really hard. The new GP three. And with the GP3, there would have been a lot of improvements. But Ron, uh, getting back to your question, I really think that what they've done with the 12 is they've tweaked some of the internals. Uh, yes, you can now do the vertical where the GoPro Hero 9, 10, uh, even the 8. Where's the 8 at? I love the colors on the GoPro Hero 8. I hate that they got rid of the removable replaceable lens module because I do have a chip on mine but luckily it's not in the field of view but the 8 and yeah it's got the media mod and I put some little foam over the uh, microphones to kind of help block out some of the noise but I love the color that comes out of the 8 it's really funny that the 9 the 10 and the 11 can't duplicate that color uh, science but um, I don't know where I was going with that uh, oh back to firmware I think that the 12 has got some firmware tweaks. It's got the same battery as what the 11 does. They've got better battery life. So they've changed what they said is they changed the 
uh, power consumption algorithm. Uh, and I think that getting rid of that GPS module was a big help. And yes, they did add Bluetooth for your ear pods. So if you've got ear pods, hey, congratulations. Now you can use that as a microphone. Why don't they just do like, we're, you know, DJI did. They've got a USB-C on the side. I could use this little Boya cable. And I can plug in any external microphone that I want into it. And I don't have to worry about buying, if you remember back in the day, the GoPro brick that was, what, 75 bucks for the brick that was really weird. And then you had to buy housing from Ulanzi to be able to hide the brick. And, you know, just make it to where the USB-C, and yes, I've got one of these little, uh, I think it's Ulanzi that makes this one here. But this way I can get access to the battery and also charge it on the go. But I wish that they would have done something audio-wise to make audio very simple um, as far as adding an external audio source. <sighs> GoPro, I mean, is it going to bite them in the butt? I hope, it, I hope that this, since this was so underwhelming of a launch video, I think the 12 is going to be... Going to be remembered for just being an overhyped up 11. Uh, I think that a lot of the things that they've done with the 12 could have been added to the 11 if they wanted to. But granted, yes, it's a, another year. It's a September cycle with GoPro. Every year you've got to push out a new camera. After watching today's, I think I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a very long time and I'm going to watch some honest reviews out there. And I think that Ray from DC Raymaker. If I, you know, maybe I'm just reading in between the lines of what he said, but I think the overheating is going to be a very big surprise on it actually overheating. Uh, let's see, DFW Spider Moose, know the G, the no GPS, I wonder if they'll add a remote accessory for it like DJI did with the Action 4. I did see in the uh, release video that they, they talked about a remote control where you can remote control the uh, GoPro Hero 12 from a distance. You know, there's only a couple of real things that I like about the GoPro where you can do hindsight. That's kind of cool. So you can record either 10 seconds or, excuse me, uh, what the new 12 does, 30 seconds. So if you've missed something, you hit record, and guess what? It'll capture that previous 30 seconds. That's a cool little feature. But more and more people are using action cameras for vlogging. And it's really funny because, you know, the video quality that you get out of these cameras is so good where you talk about, like, the Sony ZV-1. And I love this little camera. Good camera from Sony. Um... I, you know, they build it as a vlogging camera, although the lens is not wide enough, and that's why I've got the little front piece on here and got the Ulanzi wide-angle lens to put on it. But people are getting away from the big stuff. I mean, I've got my Sony a7S III, and on that I use for filming either film projects or real estate or documentaries. I've got the a7 IV that is my B camera. Uh, I've got the Sony ZV-E10 that I use... Uh, up at the office for uh, talking headshots. Um, I've got the Canon M50 that I probably not need to knock the dust off of. But anyway, people use these action cameras because they're small, they're compact. You can stick them in your pocket. You don't have to worry about lenses and putting on a lens or getting dust or dirt onto the sensor at all. You just have to just pull this out of your pocket, hit the power button, turn it on and start recording. And, you know, I talked earlier about why GoPro, will they ever send me any products? No. And I can tell you why. Because somebody, there's another reviewer that actually works pretty close with the GoPro. They get all the new GoPro stuff. And they had said, yeah, the rep had made a comment about me regarding my GoPro Hero 9 video and the audio popping and that I really hyped on it. I did. I called it out because the popping was a big issue, and I really think even to this day that the GoPro Hero 9 
should have been recalled or GoPro should have said to all the nine owners that were dissatisfied, you know what, send us your nine, we'll send you a 10 since we just released a 10. That would have been the proper thing to do and that would have kept some brand loyalty with GoPro where they still didn't have to admit fault, but they kind of admitted fault when they said, okay, the GoPro Hero 9, this is the workaround for the audio popping and crackling. Turn it on and wait two minutes. Let the camera warm up and once it warms up, then you can hit record and there'll be no audio popping. That's not really a solution. Uh, kind of like, you know, and DJI is not fault free. I mean, I called out the Action 3 immediately when I noticed that the lens was out of focus. You know, they went with a bigger sensor and that's great. And I think that whoever that they got the sensor from, their partnering, partnering company, they didn't screw the lens in and didn't focus it correctly. So you saw a lot of people on YouTube that were starting to do it themselves. And luckily now the Action 4, if I was to say, okay, if you're asking me, Andre, what are the two? Give me two recommendations of an action camera that you recommend. And that's going to be the Action 4 and the Hero 11. And even the Hero 10, because the Hero 10, I saw it on sale for $249, which to me, I was like, wow, for the Hero 10, $249. And granted, it was a uh, e-commerce packaging. Don't know what that means, but it was still a brand new camera. But, you know, you can catch those little buys on, uh, on Amazon. And I think that the GoPro Hero 10 is still a very good camera. I definitely would stay away from the 9 the 8, I think, is still a great performer. The stabilization is not as good as what the other ones are. But, and I'm not trying to say to anybody out there, do not buy the GoPro Hero 12. If you saw today's video and you are impressed with the GoPro Hero 12 and you've got money in your pocket that you're just looking to spend like right now, by all means, go ahead and get it. And I'll be sure to watch your review and please post up on YouTube because... I've been looking like every hour and what I do on YouTube, I'll just search like GoPro Hero 12 and then I'll go to, uh, what is it? The little settings bar. I'll click settings and I'll click upload date. So that will give me the most current video. And I've been looking and you see a bunch of fake channels out there that are using, I don't know if it's a GoPro Hero 10 or 11 and they're comparing it to some other camera or they've got a GoPro Hero 11 and a 10 and, they're trying to say it's a 12 versus the DJI action. And you look at those videos, you're like, that's not the action. Action has got a wider field of view. Um, I don't know if there's any people left on here. If I've actually talked you guys right into clicking off really, really quick. But back to saying about, am I going to talk you out of the GoPro Hero 12? No. If you're... On the fence and you've got the Hero 10 or 11, I would say do like I'm doing. I'm just going to wait it out. I'm going to wait for some honest reviews to come out from some consumers. And there's one person that had messaged me and said he's really, really, really thinking about calling out GoPro on their NDA because it's a two-part NDA. So you're allowed to just release something whether it's just video samples of it in use or you can talk about the specs and that's it. And then you got to wait till the 13th when it's official release date and then you can do whatever you want. That one YouTuber, he's telling me he's thinking about actually calling out GoPro saying <coughs> kind of a dick move and excuse my French, but I, I think it is for such a big company. And, you know, GoPro, when I did the GoPro Hero 11 review and I did some of these side-by-side -side, uh, videos and showing off the 10-bit color and all that, GoPro, they made a comment on that video. And they were like, you know, we're glad that you're happy. And I think I did one to actually prove, because there was a couple of people that had made a comment that, how do you know it's even 10-bit? Is it really 10-bit on the 11? So I had to show some software that's available where you can see that it's 10-bit. Yes, it is 10-bit on the GoPro Hero 11. 
Now they've got 10 bit and also they've got log. Now, if you know anything about cameras, there's a difference between the GoPro Hero flat color profile, which is on the 11, and a log. A log gives you much more dynamic range. That's kind of like saying <coughs> you've got a, I don't know, I keep on talking about my Sony a7S III. That, it's just a beast of a camera. But let's say that you're shooting in standard profile, but you desaturate a little bit and you're shooting a video, and then you go to um, S-Log3. That's the difference. S-Log3 gives you, I mean, yes, it's a super flat profile, but it gives you all that latitude. But there is a difference on that. It's like I said in yesterday's video, talking about the GoPro Hero 12, are you ready? There is a difference in 10-bit. You've got 420 chroma sampling, and then you've got 422, and then you've got, like, really raw, which is 444, and you get the full gamut of colors. You can do anything with it, what you want. There will be no banding. It won't break up at all in 444. 422, still very solid. 420, it's a little bit better than what 8-bit is, but uh, let me get back here. Me. Uh, me. Let's see, DFW Spider Moves. Maybe you're talking about if there's anybody left and you're here. Thank you very much. I appreciate you hanging around. You and I, we definitely need to hook up one day, especially when the weather gets a little bit cooler because my old butt, I just can't stand this Texas heat. And like I said, you got the air conditioner running, or I've got the air conditioner running back here, uh, the window unit in this room, because it is 107 degrees. Yeah, it is like stupid hot here, and it's been, it's been that way since June. And we're supposed to be, I think, 107 or 108 tomorrow and 109 on Friday. It's, it's just, it's ridiculous. Um, Ron Dickin, are you happy with the Action 4? I am extremely, extremely, extremely happy with the Action 4. The DJI Osmo Action 1, I was so impressed with that camera, the build quality and everything. And then the 3 came out and I got it. And it just sucked with the focus issue. It got to a point to where you just, I mean, every time I shot a video with it, that's the first thing I would look at is like, God, you know, everything close is out of focus. Everything back is still kind of out of focus too. And I got rid of it. I got another one. They got a firmware update. Didn't do nothing to it. They just added more sharpening. And sharpening does not equal focus. Two different things. Uh, but yes, I am super happy with it. It's in focus. It performs great. I have not had one hiccup. I am working on a video. I'm finishing it up. But I did both of these cameras, the GoPro Hero 11 and the Action 4, out in the Texas sun recording 4K, 30 frames per second, on a 108-degree day. And guess what one turned off first? This one. Guess which one did not turn off at all? The Action 4. Super surprised because I figured that type of heat outside. And yes, I was moving with it. but So it did get some airflow even though it's hot as Hades. Uh, but it didn't turn off. I was really shocked. Um, sled in gear. I ordered one today. It was $2.99 with the existing GoPro subscription. You know what? That's a, that's a good price. I mean... I know GoPros, they're, they're, the company is trying to get away from the su subscription. They're not pushing it as much. But if you do have the subscription and you're looking to purchase, that's a great way to do it. It knocks an extra 100 bucks off. And, you know, sled and gear, I don't know if you do reviews at all. But if you do reviews, do me a favor. Go to the main channel, worth it or not. Whenever you post up a video, just comment on one of my videos to saying, hey, uh, I've got the GoPro Hero 12, and check out my video. I would love to go check it out. And tell me your honest assessment of it. You know, do you think it works well? And I don't know if you've got a GoPro Hero 10 or 11, or maybe one of the older models, but I would like to hear another consumer's honest assessment of how this thing performs. Uh, DFW Spider Moose, I won't be buying it. I'm waiting for the DJI Pocket 3. <sighs> You know, my Pocket 1 still works great. And 
I don't know if you remember when the Pocket One first came out, but everybody was hemming and hollering about it has a built-in battery that's not removable. And they were just like, oh, it's only good for X amount of cycles, and then what happens? Then we're stuck with a camera that's like a, it's just going to be a brick because we can't charge up the battery. I've had mine since release, and it still works, and I still get the same amount of usage as far as recording that I did back then. So it's been a great camera. If they do come out with a Pocket 3, I would like a wider lens, and I would like a faster aperture, maybe something that's in the, I don't know, you know, I'm just going to be, I'm wishful thinking here, but maybe like a 1.6, 1 1.8 aperture. I think that would be a nice fast lens for it and give it a lot of control over the camera and have a little bit better. That's the only thing that I worried about, even though it's got a great build quality. I think the Pocket 3, I mean, or the DJI uh, Pocket, the original, I always felt like, man, I got to be very careful because I could break this thing. Uh, but no, if they come out with the Pocket 3, I would definitely be interested in checking that out. Uh, sled and gear, I'll give it a shot for two ninety nine. dollars record audio from my snowmobile helmet. So Bluetooth mic makes a big difference to you. There you go. See, Bluetooth mic. Yeah. For those of us that don't have a Bluetooth mic, and I don't, but I am finishing up a review on... This guy right here, the Godox Verso M2. It's a wireless microphone. And the nice thing about it is it has built-in audio recording, but it's via SD card. So you can stick any size SD card into it that you want. You don't have to worry about the internal uh, recording mechanism biting the dust and not being able to record anything. But see, I would like something like this that you could hook up with a GoPro Hero 12 or the 11 via the USB Type-C connector. And I think that that would be something like in your case scenario on a snowmobile when you've got snow and everything. And uh, I imagine that, you know, with the helmet on, you want to be able to get some really good audio without all that wind noise blowing by. So, uh, yeah, definitely give it a shot and let me know how the uh, Hero 12 works out for you. Uh, DFW Spider Moose, uh, hook up when I get a new toy in a couple weeks up. A couple, uh, okay. So, okay, so you fooled me the other day when you talked about NDA because I was like, oh, okay, NDA, I respect that. I don't want to have you spill the beans, especially online. And then you tell me that it wasn't really an NDA, but I really wonder what your new toy is. And I don't think, okay, Insta360, they're not going to release an X4. See, they did the X3 last year in 2022. So <clears throat> Insta is notorious for all of their 360 cameras. They release one every two years. If you look at all the history of their 360 cameras. So I would say the X4 is going to be released next year, 2024. I wonder what your new toy is. Could it be an Action 4? No, I think you would have said that. Uh, let's see. Sleds and gear will do. I have a 9 with the Max Lens Mod 2. I've got the GoPro Hero 9. And I still use it. It's in my truck. It's always available. So if there's a, a quick shot of something that I need to get, there it is. And I always keep a drone in my truck. Although the last couple of weeks I haven't put a drone in my truck because when it's 105, 108 degrees outside, it's like 130, 140 inside the uh, truck. And I, I don't like putting electronics in there, but I am using the media mod with the nine and that works really well with the media mod. Knock on wood. I haven't had any popping or crackling and see I knock on wood and my dog thinks that somebody's at the door. Uh, Let's see, DFW Spotter Moose, it's a big toy. Okay, so you drive 
three wheelers. Am I correct? DFW Spider Moves. Do you get a new three wheeler? I'll let you type it in the chat. By the way, if anybody's got any questions, I mean, anything that, if it doesn't have to do with GoPro or uh, my workflow for doing reviews or how do you reach out, how do you start a review channel and all that, I mean, feel free to to type it in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer since it's been uh, about 40 minutes and you can hear my voice is starting to go out just a little bit. It's been a busy day up at the office and then uh, coming home, trying to get OBS set up because I was like, good God, I need to write down some notes on how to do live streaming, connecting one to the other because, you know, it never fails. I, yes, three wheels, you're warmer. Yes, on three wheels, I'm warmer. Well, hell, a plane has three wheels, DFW Spider Moose. I mean, if you're getting a Cessna, let me know. <laughs> that would be funny if you're getting a... No, maybe you're getting your pilot's license. Three wheels. Come on, you gotta you, you got to spit out a little bit more than that, just in case any of the other viewers are curious about uh, what your three wheels are. But um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here in just a few minutes, unless there's any more questions. But, you know, I... Um, I think it's a bad move on GoPro's part to tell reviewers, you can't do this, you can't do that. They make this big thing, they release this video, they kind of push it out, September 6th, the GoPro Hero 12, and they do their launch video. And then you look at some of the videos that are out there and you're just like, hang on a second, where's all the other reviewers that normally review GoPros? I mean, Casey Neistat. Come on, I mean, GoPro's got Casey Neistat kind of money to pay him a sponsorship. But why doesn't he have one? What about all these other YouTubers? Why don't, why haven't they done a review? I guess they're all under this NDA where they can't talk about it. And I think that's a shame because it leaves you and me, the consumer, to go, okay, well, I just have to look at GoPro's commercial. It was basically what that review. Uh, release video was it was a commercial but I have to watch the commercial well, looks good I think I'll go ahead and buy it now if I'm like Sled and Gear and I've got the GoPro Heroes subscription or GoPro subscription and I can save a hundred bucks maybe I would order it then but at this point I'm just going to wait I'm going to wait it out I've spent way too much money I had the 5 the 6 still got the 6 the seven, which, like I said, in the Bahamas, bit the dust. Uh, the eight, still a great performing camera. The nine, the ten here. And by the way, if you're wondering about audio, I will say that the ten and the eleven have great audio. The only thing that I would do is get a wind slayer, put it over the outside of it, and it helps tremendously with the wind noise. And normally my eleven is also inside the uh, wind slayer. And in one of these handles, tripod on the bottom, battery here in the hand grip so that when I'm recording video, I don't have to worry about running out of battery with a GoPro because they will eat through batteries pretty quickly. Uh, let's see. DFW Spider Moose says, nope, so it's not a Cessna three-wheeler. I can't think of any other three-wheelers unless, ooh. Did you get a three-wheel electric trike? On those electric trikes, because I had one sent to me, and the uh, the company's a little bit mad at me right now because I haven't had an opportunity to put to put it together. It's a very big electric trike, and I told them it's sitting in the garage, and my garage is like 120 degrees. I'm not going to sit out there for three hours because this this electric trike I have to put everything together. It's not like I just fold it in half, and then put maybe handlebars on it, and then that's that. I've got to actually build this thing from scratch. And unfortunately, I, because they had made a comment, well, why don't you just take it in your house uh, where you've got AC and put it together there? Well, yeah, I guess I could do it if it would fit through the door. But the thing is so wide, it won't fit through the door. But I told them 
This coming weekend, we're supposed to be in the 80s, so I will definitely do it. Let's see. Nope, bigger and with much more horsepower. Is it a motorcycle trike? Because I think that what you drive is one with the two wheels up front and the one wheel in the back. So are you getting uh, a traditional trike where it's one wheel up front with the handlebars and then Volkswagen engine or Corvette engine in the back with the uh, two big tires? Kind of curious. But uh, definitely we have to get together as soon as the weather starts cooling off. But I'm going to go ahead and get off of this. I just wanted to talk about, aren't you curious why GoPro told all these reviewers that you can't do any pros and cons and you can't do any comparisons. And it makes me wonder if DJI is sitting back laughing a little bit going, <laughs> playing a little bit of catch up. Uh, DJI, yeah, they don't do 5.3K. Their 4K looks really good. But I will say that the GoPro Hero 10, 11, the 5.3K looks really good on it and it works really well. And it's nice because you can still crop it down to a 4K uh, timeline and have even crispier 4K because it's 5.3K. But anyway, uh, thank you very much for everybody that joined in on this little live stream. Uh, you can still comment in the comment section whenever YouTube decides to process this video and put it up. And uh, like I say in the... Uh, on the other channel, I'll catch you in the next review, but this one will be, uh, I'm going to start doing a lot more, let's see, DFW, no, it's still two and one wheel drive. This has got a V8 in it? I, I don't know, I'm not really, I've seen them on the road, I look at them and I go, wow, those are really cool. Uh, I don't like the one wheel up front. Uh, I do like two wheels up front because it's a little bit more stable. Uh, thanks for hosting it. It was interesting. You know, let's see what the real reviewers will talk about and how they talk about it's just the Hero 11 with a firmware upgrade. Because I think that all that to 12 is, unfortunately, until they come out with the new GP3 processor. Maybe they'll stick a one-inch sensor into it, and then everybody will complain that it overheats in 10 minutes because now it's recording... 6K on a one inch sensor, which generates a lot of hip, uh, heat on the chip. But anyway, thank you very much for everybody that joined in on this little live stream. I'm going to go ahead and cut out of here and uh, get me some water to drink. And uh, I've got a volleyball uh, tournament to go watch my daughter play in tonight. So I hope you guys have a good night and uh, talk to you later.